from the desk at Old Mates. You're watching Backyard Tech. Yesterday, we began system building our Sophos XG firewall for testing. But as I soon discovered, the Core i3 that I've got is actually no good for this project, owing to the fact that my Ethernet cards are PCI rather than PCIe. So, for part two of the Sophos XG system build, we're going to use that HP SFF. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, welcome to part 2 of the Sophos XG firewall system build video that was only going to be two part, it's now three part, and the reason behind it is, as we saw yesterday, that Core i3 there, whilst I might be able to use it for something, I'm not going to be able to use it for the Sophos XG system build, owing to the fact that the expansion bus is PCIe, whereas old mate's Ethernet cards are PCI. Sort of puts a bit of a dampener on the whole project, doesn't it? So, what we're going to do is use that HP SFF. Now, a little bit of background with that one. That is the last of the Intel Core 2 Duos crossing over into Core i series CPU. So, that's actually an Intel Core 2 Duo V Pro. All right, but it's the it's in that period we had where we still had the end of Intel Core 2 and the beginnings of Core i, 3, 5, and 7, and now 9. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build that up. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I've got enough hard drive space in it. It was recommended that I could get away with running it on an 80 gig hard drive, but I'm hoping that'll have twice the capacity in it. And we're going to build the system up today, and if we get time, we'll install and have a bit of a sticky beak at Sophos XG. I'd like this to be a two-part video. I've got a sneaking suspicion it's actually going to be a three-part video. I'm going to have to wait and see how we go with all that. Now, the other thing that was uh, intriguing to me as well was my mate who's testing it out uh, for one of his customers, and I'm obviously testing it out for someone I've known for 30-something years now, I think. Um says that you can add an, an extra Wi-Fi card for a guest network, okay? Which is, yeah, whatever, fine, although I don't need it. So we'll work that out later down the track. Now, the topology layout for this, and again, I know you're all going to have a shot at me because I'm not doing this to spec, but this is purely just for a testing scenario. I'm going to put that SFF between the modem and net server. Okay, so it's actually going to go in the signal chain, for want of a better term, or network packet train, between the modem and net server. Now, apparently, I can put 1.1.1.1 in it for the DNS, which is fine. I don't have a problem with doing that. The IP addressing for it is going to be well, as far as I'm concerned, it's perfectly legal. But as far as other people are concerned, it's going to be highly illegal because of the IP range I'm going to use for the internal zone. All right? So the IP addressing that goes between Sophos and Neth Server. Now, obviously, with Neth Server, I'm going to have to turn off IPS. I'm going to have to turn off uh, Eve Box. I'm going to have to turn off the firewall because I'm not going to need it if we're going to be testing that out. Now, turning off my firewall, my IDS, IPS, and everything like that, I just turn it off. I don't actually have uninstall it, right? So it, it just gets deactivated. The rules are still there. It's just deactivated, okay? So uh, first off, the first thing I've got to do is get the TV off that SFF and find another random box to put the TV on, and then we'll build up the uh, XG firewall. Let's get into it. Okay, so 
what do we actually get in here? So we've got a 160 gig hard drive, which should be enough. How much RAM have we got? All right, what do we got in there? Looks like we've got four gig in total there. Two two gigs, well, two one gig sticks and two two gig sticks, I guess. Um, I'm trying to get these things up. There we go. Oh, what are these cynic sticks here? These one gig or two gig? I think this thing's running four gig of RAM. One gig. Okay. So we have one, we have four gig of RAM. I actually think we're going to bump this up a little bit. Um, let me see if I've got, as the camera goes out of focus, let me see if I've got a four gig stick lying around. Hang on. Well, that was silly. <laughs> I was just about ready to close it all up and realized I hadn't told you what I've done. So I've exchanged one of the one gig sticks for another two gig stick. So we've got two, three, four, five gig, a bit of an uneven RAM number, but it will, uh, it will suffice. Oh, hang on. Stupid power supply design. <laughs> okay. Now. So, what I've got to do now, this should just slide forward, I hope. Hang on. Okay. Well, all powered up. We're in the BIOS. So, let's, uh, let's see what we've got here. Oh, no, it's a DC7900 SFF. Core 2 Duo at 3 gig. 5 gig of RAM. That's all right. Management node, AMT. Yeah, that'll be all right. Uh, storage. Set IDE. No, 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 no. Raid AACI. Uh, SATA. Oh. oh, that's eSATA. Removable media boot enabled F10 accept. Uh, set date and time. Whoa, date and time's way out. Have a look at that. Yeah, that's uh, that's no good. So it is 08 08 08. near enough damn it too the date is uh oh, this is too hard hang on let me set date and time all right let me just zoom in here so date and time are set advanced on board device options Disable, don't need Nick boot. Multiprocessor, that's all good. Bus options, that's all good. PCI devices, that's all good. Onboard devices, yep, that's all good. BIOS power on. Not too worried about that. Execute. Oh, no, I don't want to do a memory test. Power on options. Uh, display, display, display. I don't think we need to really worry about any of that. That looks all good. Okay. So, well, that's good. All right, let me burn... 
um, Sophos to disk. Uh, and we'll see if whether Sophos can actually see the hard drive. Okay, so before I actually get to installing Sophos, which I've put on optical media, yes, the old 1900s one bit per hour optical media, <laughs> got to put the Ethernet card in. Because otherwise it's not going to do anything. I just want to make sure that it's actually going to be able to detect, I guess you can say, the actual both cards. So the onboard NIC and the PCI expansion NIC. No, I'll just leave the top off it for the time being. Bugger it. Okay. F10 for setup as always. Good grief, there's a win there's a Windows XP disc in this thing. <laughs> Ow. Okay, the terribly slow DVD one bit per hour optical media install. And I need to change the boot priority, don't I? Oh, now, how do I, um, I've got to remember how to do this in HP, hold on. I've got an idea. How about I look for boot order in the BIOS? <laughs> That might be a really good place to start, mightn't it? If I actually check the boot order under storage. the old mate for dummy. Alrighty. So, let's uh, get out of that. Exit safe changes. Okay. Attempting to boot from CD-ROM. That's not good. Yes. Okay, what's on the hard drive? I just want to make sure that it can see both Ethernet cards. I'll zoom in, hang on. You guys can't actually see that, can you? There we go. If it can't see either into either Ethernet card, which is obviously going to be massively problematic, I may have another one of these. Well, I actually, do, I do have another one of those cards lying around. Formatting signature partition. Well, the drive's going nuts. All right. I'll let this do its thing and then we'll come back. I have a, uh, a sneaking suspicion that this isn't going to work very well. Um, you see there the hard drive light is locked on solid. Oh, Semi-solid. Oh, finally. It's actually starting to install it. That is very slow. This may not work. Um, actually, it's not a case of this may not work. This may not be any good, this computer. Um, all right. Let's see if we get any further. What the...
Are you serious? <laughs> what the bloody hell was that all about? <laughs> See if this will pick up. I may have to go out to the workshop and do this uh, completely. Installing default config. Okay, I wouldn't be doing this on an old computer. You're probably going to want to do this on like a Core i3 or i5 because this is stupidly slow. That Ethernet card's working. I need to see if it'll pick up both Ethernet cards. That's the $64 million question. All right, um, we'll see if we get any further. Hang on. All right, well, you can see there it's picked up two interfaces, which is lucky. So, that's good. So this will actually work, which is really good. You can see there, number of calls, number of interfaces too. So it knows this one and the onboard are there, which is excellent. So what I'll go and do now is except the camera won't focus again but you can see it there sort of i will go and uh, install all this and set it all up using the ip address tables i'm going to use for the modem or between the modem and the uh net server so i'm going to set this up between the two and then we'll get in and uh, we'll have a look around <laughs> 